In this video, we will discuss about mechanism of protein synthesis. This is the second video of protein synthesis called as translation 2. In the first video, we have discussed about the requirements of translation. In this video, we will discuss in detail what is the mechanism of protein synthesis. Now, protein synthesis occurs in the following steps. First is activation of the amino acid. Second is synthesis of amino acyl transfer RNAs. Third step is initiation of protein synthesis. Formation of polypeptide chain also called as elongation process. And then stopping of formation of polypeptide peptide chain also called as termination of the polypeptide chain. So in the first video, we have discussed what are the requirements like we need to have ribosomes. Then we need to have amino acids. There are 20 amino acids, then messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and enzyme amino acyl, transfer RNA, synthetase enzyme. Now, this we have discussed in detail in the first video of the translation 1. Link is shared in the description box. Before watching this second video, you must watch that video. So, we will de discuss in detail how does this protein synthesis take place as we discuss. First step is activation of the amino acids. So, there are 20 amino acids which are present in the cytoplasm. These amino acids, they are not active. Uh, active mean and they are lying as such. Each amino acid has, if we see structure, this is the side chain, any carbon chain. On one side, this will have amino group and second side, this will have carboxylic group. This is ST group and here it can be H. R1 can be any side chain. It can be uh, R2, R3, different kind of amino acids. So, they are laying as such. First, they have to be activated and this is done with the help of ATP. Now, what is ATP? This is adenosine triphosphate. This has three phosphates. So, these two phosphates will be released and this will connect with amino acid and amino acids they will get activated. So, this is also called as AMP that is adenosine monophosphate and this P and P this is called as pyrophosphate and this will be released. So, we will discuss how this activation is taking place like we discussed amino acid combined with a specific enzyme called as amino acyl transfer RNA synthetase, magnesium ion is required as we discussed ATP is converted to AMP then pyrophosphate is released. Now amino acid will combine with AMP to form amino acid AMP enzyme complex and this, this formation of amino acid, amino acid when this get connected with AMP this gets activated. This is now involved in the protein synthesis. So, this is also called as activated amino acid like we can see in this reaction. Now, this is the amino acid. This is adenosine triphosphate. This is amino acyl transfer RNA enzyme. Now, amino acid will get linked with adenosine monophosphate. And this is enzyme is also linked with it. So, this is called as enzyme complex. Now, this is pyrophosphate which is released. Now, this pyrophosphate, this has a bond. This is high energy bond. Now, this will break up and two inorganic phosphate will be released. So, this is done with the help of enzyme pyrophosphatase. And now, we can see here, this is the amino acid. Like we discussed, it has COH group. This is NH3 group. Now, this will combine with AMP. Here, this is adenine, ribose and phosphate. This is called as AMP. Now, this gets activated. Now, this activated amino acid will transfer this part that is amino acid to the transfer RNA. And when, get, when this transfer RNA accepts the amino acid, now this becomes amino acyl transfer RNA and this AMP unit will be released. This will become free. And now this transfer RNA has binded to the amino acid. So, this is an important step during the protein synthesis. Now, next is synthesis of amino acyl transfer RNA. Now, if we see the structure of transfer RNA, transfer RNA has CCA site. Now, this will accept amino acid. Amino acid will come and bind over here. 
this is its anticodon loop like we have discussed in the previous video of translation one detail about transfer RNA and also detailed structure of transfer RNA is shared in one video. So you can watch these two videos to know about transfer RNAs. Now DHU loop and pseudouridine uh, C loop now they help in binding to the ribosomes as we know ribosomes they are required for the protein synthesis and on the ribosomes this transfer RNA this will will be like this this will bring amino acid right so this complex has been produced now this with the help of DHU loop transfer RNA attaches to amino acyl AMP or adenine, adenylate complex now amino acid combines with the transfer RNA now as we discussed here enzyme and AMP they will be released and we have got this complex that is transfer RNA binding to the amino acid so first amino acid is activated then this will bind to the transfer RNA now next step is again we have shown in the form of reaction now this is amino acid which is activated binding to the enzyme now transfer RNA will accept this this amino acid and this will be amino acid transfer RNA AMP plus enzyme will be released similarly this is shown here how this becomes free and amino acid binds to the transfer RNA now for the initiation of the protein synthesis there are certain factors which are required they are different in prokaryotes and eukaryotes again what are prokaryotes what are eukaryotes uh, you can watch the video of prokaryotes and eukaryotes now these are the initiation factors IF3 IF2 here it can be IF2 and IF1 then there are nine initiation factors in eukaryotes now this is again uh, this is not C this is E EIF2 EIF3 EIF1 EIF4 A EIF4B EIF4C EIF4D EIF5 EI this EIF6 right so this is EI F2 right so this is E not C right so these are the initiation factors now another thing which is required is GTP GTP is guanosine triphosphate mean three phosphates they are attached so this is guanosine triphosphate now initiation factor present in the smaller subunit reaction EIF2 in eukaryotes and IF3 in prokaryotes first I'll just show you how this is then I'll make with the help of diagram this is 40S subunit plus messenger RNA now this is 40S messenger RNA so what is the initiation factor required that will be used over here so we can say like this is the smaller subunit of the ribosomes and this will bind with the messenger RNA messenger RNA carries the codons right so this step is like we have shown 40s subunit this is 40s subunit then messenger RNA this is messenger RNA this is 40s subunit right now they have binded with each other so this is called as 40s messenger RNA for this initiation factor as we discussed uh, what are in the prokaryotes and what are in the eukaryotes they are they will be used depending upon whether it is prokaryotes or eukaryotes so first step will be this that is binding of the messenger RNA with the smaller subunit of the ribosomes next is amino acyl transfer RNA complex mean transfer RNA which is binding to the messenger RNA that will reach the P site on the ribosomes anticodon of the transfer RNA will establish the link with the messenger RNA so codon and anticodon they are complementary with each other so energy is provided by GTP now 40s messenger RNA this will bind with the transfer RNA and will get 40s messenger RNA transfer RNA complex how does this happen like I'll make in detail now this is smaller subunit of uh, ribosome now this binds with the messenger RNA as we discussed earlier also first step is this the next step will be 
we will have transfer RNA here which is carrying anticodon part and this is also carrying the amino acid. So first amino acid is synthesized by AUG. AUG will code for methionine. Mean if on the here it is here it is uh, AUG and opposite to AUG on anticodon will be present. This will be we can see here this is C, this is A and this is U. So this will be UAC. So this course for methionine this is also called as initiating. This is initiating amino acid. This is methionine. So here this there is formation of 40s messenger RNA. This reacts with transfer RNA carrying the methionine. GTP is required and this is the factor EIF3 is required. So this complex is produced. This is called as 40S messenger RNA transfer RNA met. Now this is the metamine. This is the methionine. So this, this part is this part, right? Now next is larger subunit will combine with the 40S messenger RNA like here. Now this is the smaller subunit. Now what will happen? Larger subunit will come and this will get attached to the like this this complex will be produced like this so we can see here larger subunit now combines with the 40s messenger rna now this require initiation factor if1 in prokaryotes and these factors are required in the eukaryotes so this bigger subunit is called as 60s and when they combine together now in case of prokaryotes this will be 70s and in case of eukaryotes, this will be ATS. First, smaller subunit. Then, this will combine with messenger RNA. Then, transfer RNA will come. And then, this will combine with the bigger subunit. So, this is the step. So, we can see also here. We can see this is the 40S messenger RNA, transfer RNA met complex. Combined with bigger subunit, this become ATS RNA, transfer RNA, methion, met mean methionine. Like this is the smaller subunit of the ribosome. This is the messenger RNA from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. This is the transfer RNA which is carrying the methionine and this is the anticodon part. Now AUG will have opposite UAC like we have earlier discussed. Now GTP guanosine triphosphate this will be hydrolyzed and this will get converted to GDP guanosine triphosphate and inorganic phosphate lot of energy is released. Now bigger subunit will come and join right. Now these are the three sites. This is carrying the methionine transfer RNA. This is the A site and this is the E site. Uh, now E site is exit site. A site is amino cell site and P site is peptidal transfer or donor site. So this is translation initiation complex. This is the first step of the translation which is binding with the larger subunit. Now this is the first amino acid which has come over on the ribosome. Now next how other amino acid get attached this is called as elongation process. Elongation process is formation of polypeptide chain. Now amino acyl transfer RNA complex reaches the A site and attaches to the messenger RNA codon. Uh, like first I will uh, show you in the form of diagram then only you will be able to understand. Like if we see here this is the unit which we have discussed just now. Codons messenger RNA. Now this is transfer RNA which will come over here like this. This is carry the methionine. Okay. If it is AUG this will be UAC. Now this is the transfer RNA. Right. Now what will happen? Next step will be now either another transfer RNA will come and that will carry the amino acid 2. Right? Now if we see one amino acid, now this is one amino acid R1 COH. Now we have this is we have this is second amino acid. Now what will happen? Uh, COH. Now what will happen? OH and H from here 
water will be removed so we'll get c n h 3 1 c n h x one minute now this will be c o n h c r 2 and c o h it's like this this is this bond is called as peptide bond now this is between the two amino acid like this is r1 combining with r2 now this can combine with r3 this can combine with r4 this can combine with r5 and this is called as peptide bonds so this is called as polypeptide chain right now here these two amino acids they will get linked with each other so we will get a chain amino acid 2 this will combine with methionine and will get a linked chain right so transfer RNA after donating its amino acid this will become free and this will be released right so this ultimately R1 will con connect with R2, R3, R4, I R5 and so on then another transfer RNA will come that will be, 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 uh, bring another amino acid that is AE3 and ultimately now AE3, AE2 and with hyaline wet connected, connected so this is called as elongation process right so here we can see uh, this is a polypeptide chain formation elongation process an amino acid transfer RNA complex reaches the A site and attaches to the messenger RNA codon. This requires GTP and an elongation factor. Peptide bond is created. Peptidal, peptidal transferase enzyme, this causes the reaction. A site carries the peptidal transfer RNA complex. So this formation of polypeptide chain is called as elongation process. After the establishment of the first peptide linkage, transfer RNA will uh, get exit from the E site which is transient site and this also messenger RNA rotates this is called as translocation and this require a factor called as translocase EF gene prokaryotes and EEF2 in case of eukaryotes energy is generated from ATP translocation from A site codon reaches the A site and this will attract a new transfer RNA carries the amino acid now translocase will be replaced by elongation factor now these are different elongation factor which are required in prokaryotes and eukaryotes now, peptide bond formation will occur and translocation will also take place one by one all the codons of messenger rna will be exposed peptide chain elongates and lot of energy is consumed in this process one atp and two gtp molecules they are required so uh, like we discussed now this is the if we see this is the ribosome this has messenger RNA like we discussed on the ribosomes we have B site A site and E site now this messenger RNA will keep on moving on this like we have shown here too now this will like this will keep on moving toward the outer side and each codon will be exposed here new codon will be coming and transfer RNA new transfer RNA will come again carrying the amino acid now here again transfer RNA will come and after donating this amino acid this will become free this will uh, this will exit and for this whole process one ATP and two GTP molecules they are required in the form of energy and this formation of polypeptide chain is called as elongation and when messenger RNA this comes out and exposing all the codons to the transfer RNA so that polypeptide chain is produced this is called as rotation translocation process now we can see here uh, what happens now this is the transfer RNA which is carrying the amino acid this is a smaller subunit of ribosome this is the bigger subunit of ribosomes and now they have three sites now this is the A site this is P site this is the is uh, this is the E site which is called as transient site right so first step is initiation process initiation is when initiation of the protein synthesis take place now these two subunits they will come together they will combine like this this is the transfer RNA carries the amino acid this is the methionine uh, which is coming at the P site right so now here at this site at A site 
another transfer, transfer adenine will come which will be bring another amino acid right now this will combine with this and will get a small polypeptide chain at the a site and p site transfer rna will become free now this will exit from the a site e site is the temporary site which is for the exit of the transfer rna so ultimately this transfer rna will move right and this transfer rna will move to this side that is to the p site so from here this has shifted to this side so this has shifted to this side and this site has become free again now this will when this has become free this will again bring another amino acid so, right this will be a3 now this a3 amino acid here this will be linked with uh, and uh, like this one two and then three right then this will again shift to this side and transfer rna which will become free over here and that will again move toward the outer side this will move through the exit side so ultimately what happened when polypeptide chain is being produced now this site on this side which is called as a site no transfer rna reaches why it does not reaches because in place of another codons there can be uag uga or uaa which are also called as nonsense codons now this nonsense codons will reach when they are present over here no transfer rna will reach over here so protein formation will stop and they, this will lead to the formation of stopping of the protein synthesis or termination of the protein synthesis. So ultimately, when protein synthesis has stopped, now these two subunit of ribosome, they will again get separated, right? So in this way, uh, when again protein synthesis has to occur, this they will again come and combine with each other. So this is called as formation of the polypeptide chain or formation of the protein synthesis. So termination, as we discussed, that when there are nonsense codons, they will not be recognized any of the transfer RNA. So no amino cell transfer RNA will reach the A site. And then uh, polypeptide chain which has been produced on the groove present on the bigger subunit of the ribosome, now that will be hydrolyzed. Right? So there are release factors RF1 and RF2 in prokaryotes. These are release factors. And E eukaryotes, right? ERF1 in case of eukaryotes. RF2 is specific for UAG and UAA. What are UAG and UAA? These are nonsense codons or termination codon or which help in stopping of the protein synthesis. So now two ribosome subunit, when protein synthesis has stopped, they will get separated and that is again done with the help of dissociation factor. This is called as TF factor. So we can see in this diagram how termination is taking place. Now this part of the codon which is having UAG or UAA or UGA. Now, this will not be recognized by any of the transfer RNA. No transfer RNA will come over here. When no transfer RNA will come, this will not be recognized and protein synthesis will stop. And this transfer RNA, which is carrying this, this uh, polypeptide chain, now this will get released. Uh, uh, released and this will become free and transfer RNA will also be released and for this whole process we need to have uh, two GTPs and one ATPs so the, uh, after releasing of the polypeptide chain this is called as with the help of release factor or hydrolysis of the polypeptide chain from here polypeptide chain will be released and these two subunits of the ribosomes they will get separated so this is called as termination process again we can see what is the exact translation process now first step will be activation of the amino acid and that is done with the help of atp so first step is activation of the amino acid we need to have messenger rna we need to have two subunit of the ribosomes now this is smaller subunit this is the bigger subunit and first initiating codon is start codon this is called as aug and this is the stop codon which is called as uag so we can see from here to here protein synthesis is taking place now this is the transfer rna which is carrying the anti codon loop now these two subunits they will get connected and this is the messenger rna and here uh, this is the we can say a formation of the polypeptide chain and this is the release factor which is being recognized by the termination factor now first step is the initiation process so here this is the smaller subunit this is the bigger subunit messenger rna this is the first first transfer rna carrying the amino acid 
Now another, this is second transfer RNA carries the amino acid. Now they will get connected and form the polypeptide chain. So this complete polypeptide chain will be released when here it is nonsense codon that is UAG codon or stop codon. So this process is called as elongation. This is initiation and this is the termination process. Termination means when protein synthesis formation has stopped. So this is about translation process. So each ribosome will form the same type of polypeptide chain. Now when this polypeptide chain is released, it has a primary structure. But further this can get folded to form secondary a tertiary structure. So uh, there is primary structure, then secondary structure and tertiary structure, uh, three dimensional quaternary structure. Like if we see uh, first polypeptide chain which is being produced, this will be like this. This is the first polypeptide chain in which we can see these are various amino acid which are being linked by the peptide chain formation. Now this, this chain will get further folded up like this, right. So this may become secondary or these two polypeptide chain they may get linked with each other. So this is again secondary and when this folding to form three dimensional structure this is tertiary and this may lead to the formation of quaternary structure of the protein. So this is all about translation process. Uh, if you like my video please like share and subscribe. If you have any questions please discuss in the comment box. Thank you.